Hesha Rohadze is quite famous for being one of the undead, but then his many years of traveling the world in search of rare and powerful artifacts has earned him something of a reputation amongst art dealers, black market vendors, and rival would-be treasure hunters. Hesha despises the term vampire and is a devout child of Set. He worships the founder of his clan and is likewise a staunch walker of the path of Typhon. He is no stranger to corruption or dealing in illicit goods, in fact he often provides those he purchases artifacts from with armaments or documents in return, and he rarely believes in hoarding secrets for himself. He is a merchant in many ways, and he firmly believes that everything has a price. Even so, Hesha is a scholar first, corrupter second, despite his adherence to his clan's path of enlightenment. Naturally, those who do not follow this path would not know it, but some of its ethics are indeed the pursuit of knowledge and information pertaining to the resurrection of Set, as well as contributing to that goal in general, and as the faith of Set is widespread and often interpreted slightly different, Hesha remains a devout worshipper. Indeed, he would tell you himself that the idea that all followers of Set, or ministry as they now call themselves, would have some obsession with corrupting others is a damaging stereotype. But then what child of Set would ever admit to such a thing, unless it was for another purpose down the road? Hesha was born Rohadze in the lands of Nubia in the late 17th century. Growing up in the shadows of a gold mine, Rohadze had a harsh upbringing, coming from a poor family who were forced to accept whatever creed or faith currently occupying the lands of his birth. He was taught of Islam, Christianity, and even animism, yet Rohadze felt little inclination to believe that any of these faiths would treat him better than the others. Finally, in his 30s, Rohadze fell in with a local blood cult, desperate to avoid starvation. It was the leader of this cult, a Setite of some influence, who saw the brilliance in the young Rohadze and eventually chose to embrace him. Rohadze would come to change his name after his embrace, taking for himself the name Hesha. Unlike all of the faiths, Hesha found himself drawn to that of the worship of Set, their clan's ancient founder, and he turned out to be a natural in adhering to its teachings. He studied many long nights the old scrolls and words, and soon he had grown beyond his sire in wisdom, and these nights he is considered a Theophidian scholar with few, if any, peers. Hesha was struck by a certain wanderlust as he grew older, and this, combined with his lust for more knowledge of Set's will and the history of their kind, saw him time and again running into Beckett, a gangrel scholar of similar pursuit, with whom Hesha would develop a friendly, if at times strained, rivalry. In the 19th century, with the growing obsession of Egyptian artifacts in Europe, Hesha was able to amass himself quite a fortune of money as well, selling off essentially worthless paraphernalia to fund his own excavations and dealings. He would also over time develop a masterful eye for art pieces in general, as well as an extensive network of firms and agents who would cater to his needs. In the modern nights, Hesha has no monetary concerns and his web stretches far across the globe, with personal security forces, multiple havens, and several shell companies laundering his money. Hesha, like many other ministry kindred, considers his purpose in on life to protect the world from the destruction of forces darker than any can imagine. Of course, he is not doing this altruistically, but rather to ensure that once Set awakens, the world will come to know him and his children as their masters. Hesha has no direct affiliation to any branches of the worship of Set. Rather, he chooses his own path, which at times put him at odds with others of his clan. Even so, he rarely goes out of his way to insult or work against his fellow children of Set, and many times his discoveries have led to the betterment of his entire clan, so his independence is often tolerated. In 1999, Hesha got involved in the pursuit of the legendary artifact the Eye of Hazimel. A legendary item of untold power, Hesha decided both to study and potentially even wield in some form, in order to further aid his clan and himself in their pursuit of power. While his motivations may have remained unclear, the Setite devoted significant time and resources in its pursuit, eventually landing a deal with some Nosferatu of Atlanta to have it handed over to a personal friend of his, Erich Wegel. Wegel had chosen to associate himself with Ruhadze after the two met in Damascus during Wegel's tutoring, and they joined forces in 1916 in Alexandria. Wegel worked closely and eventually came to live with Hesha after that. Wegel offered to retrieve the Eye of Hazimel in Atlanta instead of Hesha, and for a brief time even had the artifact in his belongings. Yet the attack orchestrated by Sasha Vikos upon the Art Museum of Atlanta led to his untimely demise, and the Eye instead fell into the hands of a young Torador named Leopold, who would later come to wield its powers with disastrous results. 
It was during this pursuit that Hesha also experienced one of his worst temptations. A young woman named Elizabeth Dimitros, a restorer of art pieces and antiques, caught his interest and he worked to bring her into his fold in order to replace the lost Vagel who shared similar specializations. Yet Elizabeth would come to fall in love with Hesha, and he would likewise find his conviction at times weakened by this distraction. Ultimately Elizabeth escaped Hesha's grasp, having come to realize the true nature of the man she thought she loved, in the process watching Hesha's potential childer, his security officer Thompson, die. Thompson, having likewise realized how cruel and twisted his master was, chose to die immortal rather than to become like Rohadze. Angered by this betrayal, Hesha embraced Elizabeth and shackled her in her apartment to meet the sun, offering her up to the sun as penance for his falter in his pursuit of the path of Typhon. Elizabeth, however, was saved by Khalil Ravana, one of the last surviving Ravnos, who would use her to try to lay a trap for Hesha. Elizabeth would eventually survive, but it is unknown what her current condition is, as she no doubt has chosen to keep away from her sire. Ultimately, the Eye of Hazimel would once more fall into the hands of Hesha, and he would experiment with it restlessly, trying to wrest its powers away from its former owner Hazimel, also known as Rakshasa, one of the child of the Ravnos and Titiluvian Sabbath Azura. One of the Eye's powers in particular interested Hesha. It could trace the lineage of the owner quite efficiently. Thus, if Hesha could wrest the Methuselah's grip away from it, it would possibly be able to help him find Set himself, a feat that would surely bring about the final knights in his clan's favor. Indeed, not only that, but there are other members of the ministry who originate from other clans. It would thus be no complex feat to likewise track down the Aeons, the Antediluvians, and make short work of them as well. Hesha was making some slight progress in his research when the fire court of the Setites took him and the Eye to their temple. The fire court is one of the founding temples of the Setites, and they hoped to be able to wield the power of the Eye themselves and likewise sought to bring Hesha closer to their interpretation of their faith, as he was beginning to make waves a little too much for their liking. Hesha and the Eye were eventually saved thanks to the help of La Sombra and Tribu Fatima al-Lama, and the Eye would find its way back to its owner via Beckett. It is also believed that Hesha never handed the Eye over to Beckett willingly, but rather that it was taken from the Satite through force, Beckett cutting off the Theophidian scholar's hands to get it. Hesha is later also believed to have overseen a diplomatic meeting between many different so-called clans of the dead, amongst them the Giovanni, the Samedi, Harbingers of the Skull, and even the Cappadocians, a meeting that was one of the first steps to the eventual family reunion that would form a new clan, the Hecata, from the ashes of the many different lines of Cappadocius. Hesha also took this opportunity to stake Isabel Giovanni, whom he and his clan had long been frustrated with for her disrespect, and in turn proceeded to convert her to their faith as one of the followers of Set. Hesha is a master manipulator, despite his professed interest in trade and the betterment of his own clan. He rarely, if ever, shows his true colors, instead adapting his mannerism for the occasion. He is intensely paranoid and rarely allows for any unforeseen consequences, folding plans into plans upon plans in order to account for any possible disturbance. Hesha rarely allows for his deathly pallor to show, so reliant on his vitae to flush his dark skin, that it is only through conscious effort, or when he no longer has the blood to do it, that his skin grows pallid, and the coiled serpent tattooed on his scalp is visible. He is notoriously single-minded when he has his eyes set on a price, and he rarely, if ever, forgives a slight, and in many ways Rohadze is a model child of Set, unburdened by internal politics and focused instead on the long-term goal. This video was brought to you by my patron Ian Nichols. My apologies for the wait, but I hope it was worth it. Thank you for your support.